Dr. Faisal Ibrahim. Mr. Deputy Speaker, Minister Ong had earlier raised the importance of how we should not cap the top but lift the bottom. I would like to add that to lift the bottom, we are committed to ensuring equal access to opportunities for every child, from preschool to adulthood. Our commitment goes beyond our students in schools to adult, adult learners who have graduated from the formal school system. MOE leads the Skills Future Movement, which emphasizes opportunities for Singaporeans to fulfill their potential, regardless of starting points. A wide range of subsidized modular courses are available through the Skills Future series at our institutes of higher learning. We also empower individuals to make informed decisions for lifelong learning through the My Skills Future portal which hosts online self-assessment tools. This ensures that those who may, have had, who may have had a rocker start than most can still find a path back into learning and be to themselves for a better future. For now, let's go back to the start of a child's educational journey. MOE believes that with a robust system of support, all children can go on to lead confident, independent lives with hope in the future. I will cover three points, specifically how MOE is committed to investing in three, three groups of students. Our students from disadvantaged families, our high needs learners, and our students with special education needs. First, I will talk about supporting our children from disadvantaged families. Let's start with Siti Hajar, who is currently a Primary 1 student at Riverside Primary School. Prior to joining Riverside Primary School, she was enrolled in MK at Riverside in 2016. Recognizing that children learn better in school when they have a strong early start, we set up the first five MOE kindergartens in 2014 with the following admissions policy to reserve one third of places for Singaporean children from low income households. This has benefited children like Siti Haja, who may not have had the opportunity to enjoy quality and affordable preschool education otherwise. Siti Haja has also benefited from the subsidies provided through the Kindergarten Fee Assistance Scheme. Last year, her monthly fees at MOE Kindergarten cost $150. But because Siti Haja's family met the income eligibility criteria, her parents only paid a monthly fee of $1.50. As Siti Haja was also enrolled in K-Care, for afternoon student care, her parents paid $2.10 instead of the money fee of $225 for Singapore citizen children. Siti Haja was also able to redeem three sets of uniforms early as part of the startup grant of $240. While she joined MK at Riverside with fear and anxiety, Siti Haja blossomed into a confident and joyful learner. Her experience at MOE Kindergartens gave her a good head start when she enrolled in Riverside Primary School this year. Similarly, her brother, Saiful, who is Primary 4 this year in the same school, also receives financial support under MOE's Financial Assistance Scheme. Under this scheme, he has his school and miscellaneous fees waived and receives free textbooks, school attires, and transport subsidies. He is automatically placed on the school meals program where he can use the meal subsidies for breakfast, lunch, and recess. With basic needs such as food and transportation no longer a concern, Saiful is a friendly and helpful student who is fully engaged in his learning. 
I should add that MOE's financial assistance will apply to Saiful, even if his family is already receiving concurrent help from other agencies. We don't want financial concerns to prevent our children from exploring their interests. Over the past few years, Saiful has been able to tap on the school's opportunity fund to enjoy co-curricular activities such as a local learning journey to the River Safari. In the future, as Siti Hajar and Saiful progress to a post-secondary educational institution such as the ITE Polytechnics or AUs, Autonomous Universities, we will continue to support them. Since 2017, we have increased the quantum and extended the coverage of government bursaries for ITE, Polytechnics and AU students. By raising the annual bursary quantum of the CDC CCC bursary by between 200 to 400, depending on the institutions, we can help students further defray the cost of post-secondary education. We have also enhanced students' access to these bursaries by introducing gross monthly household income as an alternative income assessment so that more students qualify for assistance. Students may also apply for other merit-based scholarships and financial assistance schemes offered by foundations, self-help groups, and other community or private organizations. As shared earlier during the PQ, in 2016, over 70 percent of students at ITE received some form of financial aid, bursaries, or scholarships. More than 60 percent of our students in polytechnics and AUs received similar support. So, just like Siti Hajar and Saiful, other children with similar background can be assured that they'll be given the same opportunities regardless of their family's circumstances. Now, I will speak about investing in our high-needs learners and preparing all students for the future. MOE remains committed to helping our weaker students in schools through leveling up initiatives. For example, additional teachers are provided to ensure that the learning support program and its sister program, learning support for mathematics for lower primary students, are conducted in small groups of less than 10. A primary school student on these programs would have received 60% more resourcing compared to a peer not on the program. At the secondary level, MOE provides additional resourcing for students from the normal course. To smoothen their transition to post-secondary education, these students can take elective modules, which are 20 to 30 hour modules that secondary schools may develop together with our ITEs and polytechnics. Bandermere Secondary School is one such school that has done well to support its students from the normal courses. As part of its elective module framework, the school identifies accredited schools, uh, science and technology courses at ITE that will benefit students as they face the future economy. For secondary four students, the elective modules are used as precursors for different pathways leading to post-secondary educational institutions. The support provided by Bandimere Secondary School is not just academic, they also have students overcome adversity responsibly on the SOAR program that engages at risk youths after school. To the program, these students engage in healthy and meaningful recreational activities jointly planned by community partners such as family service centers. MOE also provides authentic work experience opportunities for students in specialized schools such as North Flight School and Assumption Pathway School. For students in these schools who are not yet ready for, for, to further their education at ITE or start work independently at the workplace, they can join the Work Study Pathways program. They will have on-the-job learning at the workplace for three days and continue with their education for the remaining two. Regardless where our students begin in life, MOE has always a place place importance on nurturing students who do not just have the mastery of knowledge, 
but also skills and attributes required to succeed in life. So we look at the, at the different strengths and we help them as much as we can. Mr. Azmun Ahmad acknowledged about the success of the Malay community and shared his concern about children from disadvantaged backgrounds. He has concerns if they are able to progress as well as they should. I would like to address this point in Malay. Tuan, ada perbincangan tentang keadaan masyarakat Melayu. Salah satunya ialah kekhawatiran bahawa kita tidak maju, ketinggalan dan tidak disertakan dalam kemajuan negara. Saya mahu menyakinkan anda bahawa perkara ini tidak benar. Sejauh ini, masyarakat Melayu sudah menunjukkan kemajuan dalam pendidikan seperti yang dapat kita lihat dalam data, data yang akan saya kongsi bersama. Berdasarkan data sepanjang 10 tahun, terdapat peningkatan peratusan pelajar Melayu yang memasuki pendidikan pos menengah. 84.1% daripada kohort darjah 1 tahun 1997 telah memasuki pendidikan pos menengah. Bagi kohort darjah 1 tahun 2006 yang kini sudah berumur 18 tahun pula, 94% daripada kohort tersebut telah memasuki pendidikan pos menengah. Kita juga dapat melihat peningkatan jumlah pelajar yang telah meraih kelulusan tiga subjek di, perang, di peringkat O. Pada tahun 2007, 86.6% daripada pelajar Melayu telah meraih kelulusan sekurang-kurangnya dalam tiga subjek di peringkat O. Pada tahun 2016, jumlah ini meningkat menjadi 91.3%. Bagi pelajar peringkat A pula, 76.4% daripada para pelajar yang menduduki peperiksaan pada tahun 2007 telah mendapat sekurang-kurangnya kelulusan dalam tiga subjek H2 serta lulus dalam kertas AM atau pengetahuan dan penyelidikan. Peratusan ini meningkat kepada 83.2% pada tahun 2016. Anak-anak kita telah menunjukkan prestasi yang lebih baik sekarang. Dengan kadar kelulusan yang lebih tinggi, mereka mempunyai pilihan yang lebih banyak apabila meneruskan pengajian ke peringkat pos menengah. Termasuklah pelbagai peluang untuk meningkatkan pendidikan dan mendapat pekerjaan yang lebih baik. Namun begitu, sebagai sebuah masyarakat, masih banyak lagi yang boleh kita lakukan. Kita haruslah prihatin dengan keperluan jiran, keluarga dan sahabat handai kita dengan memberi sokongan dan galakkan kepada mereka. Kita tidaklah berseorangan dalam hal ini. Saya mahu menyakinkan anda bahawa MOE amat komited untuk memberikan sokongan kepada anak-anak kita tanpa mengira bangsa dan latar belakang. Selanjutnya, saya akan meneruskan ucapan saya dalam bahasa Inggeris tentang usaha dan sokongan kita kepada anak-anak kita dalam pendidikan keperluan khas. The last group of students I will focus on is our students with special education needs. Madam Rahayu Mazam earlier highlighted her experience as a parent of a child with special needs. The role of parents and caregivers is critical and a challenging one, especially during the crucial transition points of, of the care recipient's life. As the SPS of MSF, I would like to reassure Madam Rahayu and Ms. Chia Yong Yong that the government has not forgotten families and caregivers of persons with disabilities. As part of our efforts under the third enabling master plan, we are adopting a whole of life approach to ensuring adequate support and transition 
for persons with disabilities and their caregivers at each life stage. MSF will develop a framework to support caregivers, especially new parents of children with special needs, to build relevant skills and improve their understanding of special needs. For young children at risk of developmental delays, the government aims to strengthen early detection and intervention to maximize their developmental potential. MSF is piloting the development of a continuum of early intervention services with varying intensities to better meet the different needs of our children over time. We hope that early intervention will give our children a good start as they progress to formal education. Currently, there are 31,000 students with special educational needs, with 80% of them in mainstream schools and another 20% in our SPED schools. As we support our students, we recognize the need to change the narrative in our society. We want to celebrate our children to focus on their abilities, not disabilities. We want to work towards a society where, where we do not just accept but embrace those who are differently able. We want to see this cultural change in our schools, both SPAT and mainstream. However, we must face this change. The sense of welcome that we want to achieve has to be developed and achieved over time and with sustained effort. We need everyone to commit to this. Teachers, schools, parents, the public, employers, and the wider society. Likewise, we have to teach our children with special educational needs to be advocates for themselves. They must learn how to communicate their needs to friends, co-workers, and employers, and to be confident contributors to our society. MOE recognizes the importance of skills development for all our students with special education needs. Sometimes, these skills are best developed in customized learning environments, such as small groups, so that students with particular learning needs can receive intensive learning experiences. Sometimes, the skills need to be developed in authentic real-world contexts, such as the experience of communicating with typically developing peers and adults in community settings. This is because not all our students with special educational needs are comfortable in social settings and require a long-term level of support by specially trained teachers to develop the skills needed. The best combination of both settings, customized and real world, varies from child to child. A child who has moderate to severe needs will benefit from extensive support available in SPAT schools and a pace inclusion in real world settings through interaction opportunities with peers and adults in a variety of activities. A child with mild special educational needs can function in the typical setting of a mainstream school lesson and CCA, but will need occasional pull-out sessions, perhaps once a week, one-to-one, -one, or in a small group, to learn certain skills more explicitly. This is where we are seeking to have a hybrid approach. The learning environment of the SPAT school accommodates the needs of such students, allowing them to learn at a comfortable pace. When they are ready, they have opportunities to interact with peers in other schools, such as through the satellite partnerships. Internationally, school systems continue to wrestle with the question of what is the right amount of inclusion for students with special education needs. Cha Yong Yong and Madam Rahayu have shared with us approaches to inclusion 
which need to be studied further. They can rest reassured that MOE will take their suggestion seriously. Thank you for your suggestion. There are about 25 students with special educational needs in our schools. They spend a large portion of their day learning together with their peers. This is where they attend the mainstream schools. Since 2005, we have equipped all teachers with a basic understanding on supporting these students during their pre-service training in NIE. All schools have a core group of teachers known as our teachers trained in special needs to provide support to students in our classroom. We recognize the importance of equipping our teachers with these skills and have stepped up our efforts to train more in the next few years. Our allied educators in learning and behavioral support also work alongside our teachers. Let me illustrate this through the story of Sam from Presbyterian High School. Because of autism spectrum disorder, Sam had difficulties approaching teachers presenting and presenting in class. He would feel sick and look for opportunities to avoid these situations. This is unfortunate, unfortunate because while Sam has a flair for Chinese orchestral music and plays the Huan well, he's afraid of performing in front of others. Thankfully, we have an allied educator, Mr. Lei Chung Kit, who worked closely with Sam's teachers and parents. This is to equip Sam with the strategies to manage his anxiety-related difficulties in social situations. Eventually, I'm happy to share, Sam, Sam applied what he learned and put up a great performance in front of the whole school. We know that there are many more teachers and allied educators like Mr. Lei out there who are supporting our students to, come, to overcome their learning difficulties. A number of students in mainstream schools also need support for other physical impairment or for hearing loss or visual impairment. MOE fully funds a range of assistive, assistive technological devices, also known as AT devices, for them and also collaborates with two volunteer welfare organizations, the Asian Women's Welfare Association and the Singapore Association for the Deaf, to provide integration and learning support for students with physical and sensory impairment. These organizations also provide training for students and teachers on the use of the AT devices. Likewise, students in SPAT schools who need AT devices receive them for free. I have sh shared Sam's journey in a mainstream school. Now I would like to share the story of Emmet, who graduated from Mines Woodland Gardens School in 2017. Deemed ready for work, he was referred to the School to Work Transition Program, which MOE jointly launched with the Ministry of Social and Family Development and SG Enable in 2015. Job coaches supported him at various work experiences organized by the school and its industrial partners. MF parents also worked with the school to reinforce his travel training skills and build his stamina and fitness for employment. This year, MF found employment at the Yishun Community Hospital in the kitchen department where he works as a kitchen attendant. A job coach continues to support him as he assimilates into the work environment. We are happy to share that 150 student, uh, children have benefited from the program. They are employed in diverse sectors such as healthcare, homes, retail, and hospitality. By 2019, we hope to expand this program from the current 12 SPAT schools to 15. Members have asked whether students like Sam and MF get to meet with other students and how well they and their peers are doing in interacting with and understanding one another. Mainstream schools and mainstream students are learning important lessons on empathy and acceptance of others who are different from them. This includes explicit, explicit instructions about the needs of persons with disabilities through the character and citizenship education syllabus. Our schools have also developed programs to strengthen peer support so that no child is left behind. The Rainbow Peer Support Leaders Program by Orchid Park Secondary School 
does just that. Students who have been identified to be part of the program are taught how to support their classmates with special educational needs. They become advocates for their peers, sharing and standing up for them in classroom. Admittedly, some schools having gone ex the further along the road to an inclusive culture through these programs, but it is something that every school is committed to bringing about. Our satellite partnership program has been, bridge, has been the bridge in linking our students from both SPAT and mainstream school. In the program, a SPAT school is partnered with a mainstream school, and both schools provide purposeful activities such as joint CCA activities, sharing of facilities, and joint school celebration. As we see our SPAT students grow in confidence through the program, we see our mainstream students grow in empathy. However, partnership and activities are not limited to the satellite partnership. At the recent SYF festival concert, students rehearse and perform alongside each other in a range of items. The upcoming National Day celebrations will also bring both groups of students together. The most intensive form of partnership is a social and academic partnership between Pathlight School and Mayflower, Yo Chu Kang and Pierce Secondary School. This partnership allows for Pathlight students to be taught by Pathlight teachers in self-contained satellite classes cited within mainstream schools. Where appropriate, Pathlight school students join their mainstream peers in their classes for academic learning. This model is possible because the academic and social inclusion opportunities serve the needs of the Pathlight students. The experience is, however, not easy for these students with moderate autism. Yet, gradual exposure over a period of years have benefited these students who go on to post-secondary educational institutes. We have also expanded our range of special educational needs support in post-secondary educational institutions as our students with special educational needs move on to the next stage of their education. Since 2014, MOE has, has established special education needs support offices known as SSOs in each of our AUs, polytechnics, ITE colleges and arts institutions. This is a one-stop support unit where students such as Benjamin can seek support as they chase their dreams. Benjamin is currently a second year student with visual impairment, studying for his Diploma of Electrical and Electronics Engineering at Singapore Polytechnics. To ensure a smooth transition to Singapore Polytechnic, the SSO and Benjamin's lecturers worked closely to see how they could facilitate his learning, such as enlarging the font sizes on slides and handouts. The SSO also arranged for Benjamin to visit the Resource Centre at the Singapore Association of the Visually Handicapped so he could find the best AT device for his needs. He eventually chose a handheld device which makes reading easier by enlarging, enlarging fonts and adjusting the colours contrast of materials. With the support of his lecturers, friends and staff from the SSO, Benjamin has been doing very well. As I mentioned earlier, we want to see a change in our schools, both SPAT and Main Street. One where our children are celebrated and accepted, where we focus on their strength and abilities to, to help them reach their potential. Have we got the right balance between the customized setting in our SPAT school and the amount of interaction opportunities afforded by satellite partnerships today. Have we got it? Have we got the right balance? I think we have made progress. But we still have ways to go. As I see the passion and the concerted efforts of the teachers in both SPAT and mainstream school, and also the passion and the touching words and what was spoken earlier, I'm confident such inclusion efforts will gain momentum. In our schools, we must teach our students to be empathetic and accepting of people who are differently able, who learn 
at a different pace and who come from different family backgrounds. From the stories I have shared with you today, it is heartening to see that we are building students of character. While we are continuously improving the affordability, accessibility and quality of educational support provisions to students as adults in the world of work and society, we must be sensitive to the needs of every Singaporean. We must welcome and support them, regardless of their background and starting point in life. In other words, where we begin in life will not dictate where we end up. Only then we can, can we, only then can we call ourselves a truly inclusive nation. Thank you.